how do you tell a young kid like, hey, you're going to lose your vision? I'm talking to Dad, Ironman competitor and founder of the non-profit organization, A Race Against Blindness. When did you first realize that Luke had sort of problems with his eyesight? The eyesight part, we didn't really realize until maybe a couple of years ago, but he was born with um, something called polydactyly, which is extra digit sized hands and feet, which is part of his condition. And as we were going through his early childhood, we were always had our eyes open to see if there was anything else going on. We didn't have a diagnosis at that point. We didn't know of any other kind of problems that he might have. And it wasn't until he was seven, eight years old that we started to notice some things that led us to the diagnosis, which the first symptoms that they get are difficulty seeing at night. So night vision is what we noticed, which was, I remember the first time I really noticed it was I was laying in bed with him, doing the bedtime routine, hanging out with him. And he had his favorite stuffed animal, Wolfie, his little stuffed wolf. And he's sitting there going, hey, where's Wolfie? I need Wolfie. And I'm like, oh, he's right here, buddy. And Wolfie's three feet away from him sitting on his lap. And he couldn't see Wolfie because the room was dark. And I could see Wolfie just fine. And I knew where he was, but my son couldn't. And I was like, wow, that's Mm -hmm. what's wrong. Like, he's right here. So, you know, that was really the first time that I noticed something. And there's been multiple other similar moments now since and we've noticed it progressing to the point where he's having a harder time seeing and even more light situations so like you know it's dusk and he's having a hard time seeing versus just it's dark at night and then over time you know that's going to keep progressing to the point where he's having a harder and harder time seeing even during the day and then they have a visual constriction where their visual field starts to narrow and ultimately what will happen is it looks like they're looking through a straw like they'll have just this really fine field of view and uh, eventually that entirely can go away so that's the typical progression of the disease but he seems like a really fantastic boy in the video it how is it affecting his school life at the moment and his social life so he's super strong he's super tough he's got this really positive attitude but first i don't think it really set in on him what it meant and then as time went by and i think he started to maybe appreciate some of what was going on himself he's understandably had his rough moments where he breaks down or has a hard time. But in general, he's been extremely strong and positive and just keeps going about living his life. And that's one of those amazing things about children is just that they're this resilience and this, you know, toughness about they can still somehow focus on all the fun things that matter to them, their friends and their toys and their games and all the fun stuff that they like to do. It somehow just seems to overcome everything else for them in their lives. And that's such a powerful thing to see and realize and to learn from as an adult to go back to your kids and realize, okay, like this is, like he's focusing on the things that matter and he's somehow able to dad at the forefront of what he's going through in life. He's handling it in a really uh, strong way and he's still doing as many of things as he loves to do. And he doesn't seem to affect him on a day-to-day basis from a mental and social standpoint. He's just his normal old self just living life and being being luke which is so amazing and so positive to see sounds like a brave kid i imagine you you and your wife are being incredibly brave and can't imagine how it affects you guys how are you doing the fundraising so that was the challenge so when we first started the nonprofit, we tip we tried to do typical fundraising stuff just saying hey we're holding a fundraiser donate to this cause we're a 501c3 nonprofit, so people can get tax deductions for donating to us and all that kind of stuff so we started just the typical stuff and we really didn't have any foothold and we didn't really have any traction with that. And a lot of people would say, oh man, I'm so sorry what you're going through. And that was the end of it. There wasn't really any uh, movement behind it. So we started to look at what other nonprofits do and other organizations do to raise money. And they hold events and galas and golf tournaments and sometimes they hold raffles and things like that. And so we're like, what can we do that will generate some buzz and generate some interest and get some people excited about donating to our nonprofit and being aware of us. And so around the time that we had decided to start the nonprofit, we also made a life choice that we were going to really focus on giving him as many experiences that we could while he still had vision. So he had a core memory bank of visual memories is what we were calling it to go out and see the world and do as much as we could. So we all hopped in a van and started traveling around the U.S. and seeing national parks and going to beautiful places and just showing them the world. And we decided to raffle or it's called a giveaway of sweepstakes, but we decided to give away the van that we were traveling in as like a a carrot to uh, get people interested about what we were doing. And that really started the ball rolling downhill of generating interest and having this thing that people could get behind and People who were just interested in raffles and giveaways and adventure travel and adventure vans. Yeah. 
just get interested. And then they would hear our story and they'd be like, oh my God, this is an amazing story. And then they would get motivated by it. And then they tell their friends. And so that's the, the fundraising method that we fell into, which was doing these sweepstakes and these giveaways of fun items. And we've gotten all these great sponsors now who have helped donate the items and really make this mission possible for us. And now we are growing and getting a bigger following every day. But that's how we set, settled into a way to make this something that is open and available to so many people who may have never heard of this condition or may not be affected by vision loss in their family or their lives and make it something that's now that they're aware of, which is really exciting and amazing to see. Your cause is unbelievably worthwhile anyway, but I think the fact that you're doing this for your son, and I think it's a game changer once you're a parent that you will move heaven and earth to do what you can. We've got your contact details in the show notes. People could contact you and donate an item or could do an event for you or fundraising. I suppose that's what you're hoping might happen long term. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. And I think every single person can make a difference. I, I really, truly believe it. Whether it's donating a dollar, whether it's just sharing our story with your friends and telling 10 people, things like that, that makes such a hugely impactful difference. And so it doesn't matter what like resources you have or anything like that, like any, everybody can make a difference. And I've used this line, God knows how many times now, 10 million people all gave a dollar. We could literally land on a cure tomorrow, basically. And the, the reality is that how do you reach 10 million people and how do you get them to all give a dollar is so hard because there's so many important causes in the world and the ability to reach people, even with the internet is still limited. Um, but it, it is possible that everybody can make a difference. Everybody can make their voice heard, make their vote count, so to speak. So there's, it really is something that anybody can help. Yeah, no, I agree with you. Me and a friend ran a charity 10 years ago. And I think a lot of the reason we got the support we did is because we were a small charity. I think a lot of it is just people like to be involved in something that's positive. So yeah, you're right. I can totally concede that at the moment, people might say, I just don't have any money to spare. I'd question whether people wouldn't have a dollar or a pound to spare. But I, but then in the same way, I would want to put, wouldn't put that pressure on people. There's always something you, you can do, even if it was sharing the podcast episode, or even if it was, do you know what? Commenting and just saying, look, good luck with what you're doing. I hope I can help. A lot of the, a lot of the time, that just motivation is worth. You're hundred percent right. Look, kind words, the positivity. There's plenty of things to be negative about in the world and see bad things and bad news and all that kind of stuff. So positivity, man, just over overwhelms you with, okay, we can do this. We can get through this. This is a little bit of a hurdle or a hard time that we got to get through, but there's so much support out there and just keeps moving and makes, it makes all the difference in the world. This must be unbelievably hard, but it says that you're so focused. I really admire you. How's your wife doing? Interestingly, we're not married. We were divorced before we found out about Luke's diagnosis, but we're actually extremely close. We work together in the nonprofit. We're true partners in that. We're true partners in our co-parenting of Luke. And so we really merged our lives to be able to give him what he wanted. Like last summer when we traveled, we all traveled together. Mom, dad, we had grandparents involved. Everybody was together. We're not a traditional separated family or anything like that. We're very, very close and very uh, committed to this effort together. But she handles it very well. And she's, as you'd expect, it's very hard for a mom to go through getting a diagnosis like this. And she's had her hard moments, just as we all have, but she's been a pillar of strength and a, an amazing example for all of us for overcoming all this. She's extremely mentally tough. She does Ironman racing and all this kind of crazy stuff to be this example of overcoming challenges and doing everything. It is inspiring, Stephen, because th things aren't often the perfect situation, but actually you've come together to, to do something for your son. I hope you give yourself time to actually just acknowledge what you're doing because I can't imagine what you're going through. I really admire it as a dad who has a son of a similar age to you. I hope I would be as hardworking and brave and courageous as you are, mate, because you're putting your energy to best possible way. And I really hope that anyone listening, if they can help, and even if that's just helping to just go to your website and go, mate, good luck with what you're doing and share it with the community. I really hope that people do that because actually I know that if it was my son, I'd There'd be times when I'd, I'd be needing some support. You've hit it on the head that you do anything for your kids. You move heaven and earth and uh, do, do whatever it takes. And that's really how it feels. I listen to a lot of mindset related educational content and people who talk about how to do hard things like Navy SEALs and special forces and all that kind of stuff. And one of the things that they really hit on is mission. If you have a mission and you have a purpose, 
you can really do anything. And for me, I can completely attest to that and vouch for that because I never felt a drive like I feel now to do what we're doing and to accomplish this mission because I'm so committed to the purpose and it means so much to me. And so knowing that really makes it possible to do the long nights, do the hard hours, do the challenging days of running into the wall, hitting the roadblock, trying to overcome this thing and figuring out how to get there. It's all possible when you know your mission and your purpose. I agree with you. I certainly know when I first became a dad, you do suddenly get this insane drive, unlike anything you've had in your life. And I think anything to do with your children needing your support, it just goes a whole new level, a whole new gear. It doesn't matter if it's not your children or it's not children in your own country. I think if you can help someone and they're in front of you, help them. That's just an obvious win. The things that make me more proud of my life, the things I've done for other people, and that's not just a soundbite, it's true. I get more of a buzz when I do something to help my kid or my wife. I train Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu and I'm pretty bang average, but I get so much more of a buzz of helping a white belt ready for their first tournament. I generally get more out of that. I And I think... That's the transaction. I'm giving you an opportunity here to actually be a part of something really exciting and powerful and helpful that we don't know where it might end up. I don't know if you may have seen the um, podcast description, but I've struggled with my mental health for years with depression. And I remember when I first went to my doctor, he said that one of the best things you can do if you're feeling depressed is do an altruistic act for someone else because it suddenly gives you an element of control of your life. That's something you can control. If you see someone do something brave or or on social media, or just whenever. You can say, you can be that person that goes, well done, or keep going. I think that a lot of people, maybe a lot of dads struggling with their mental health and feeling a bit, like life's a bit chaotic. That would be the best advice. They always say, if you've got a problem, in my case, depression, get a bigger problem. It's the reason I set up the podcast in the first place, because I want to help other dads who often just feel anxious or sad. It's very selfish. Selfishly, it helps me. And I'm sure people being involved in what you're doing will suddenly be like, oh my goodness, actually, I'm getting so much from this. I think you've just got to tell people, make it really broad. You can do whatever you want, just be involved. This has actually been really great to have this conversation and hear all your experiences with nonprofit work. So just being here and talking has been amazing. And then obviously letting me share my story with your audience obviously makes such an impact what we've talked about with just get, getting the word out, letting people know about it. And you mentioned that it doesn't matter where you're from. And in, in this case, this disease doesn't just affect people from one country. Some, some of the biggest pockets of people affected by this disease are in other countries from us. So this is really a, a global effort, uh, something that can help people around the world. We're so grateful to be able to talk to you and your audience and in, in your part of the world, because it means well, so much. I appreciate you. So that's kind to say, but I, and I feel, I think without getting too spiritual, I think we are all connected in a way we don't really understand. I think that goes a whole degree further when you become a parent. When I know they're a parent, I know they're a dad, I want to help. The idea of parents struggling really doesn't sit well with me. And there'll be lots of dads out there. And I've met lots of dads through this podcast who are like, I like what you're doing. I, I see what you're trying to do and actually just connect dads. Because I think people on the whole do want to help if they can. The problem is often I think men are less likely to talk and open up and ask for help. And hopefully if all this podcast does is shows actually I can totally help or it's okay to ask for help. Hopefully that's what will happen. Yeah, no, I agree fully, especially the part about asking for help. And I think one of the things that's really important for like dads or people in a tough situation is to have that moment that sparks them out of that tough place that they're in, because you could look at my situation now and I'm a year and a half into the running this nonprofit, but if you went in reverse five plus years ago, going through a divorce, a low point in my life, a couple of years after that, getting this diagnosis that my son is losing his vision and is going to go blind an even lower point in my life. I went through a lot of really tough, hard, dark times and felt very hopeless and felt very like I couldn't do anything right. It's just this bad place, but it took sparks listening to a certain podcast, listening to a book. You're like, okay, yeah, I can do this. I can, get, I can just take a step forward, take one little step forward, ask for help. And I, I went to therapy. I had people I could talk to. And it was those little baby steps, those little like building blocks and getting one step forward and just you, you start stacking your wins. And every day is getting a little bit better and you're making little progress. And then next thing you look back after a certain point, 
time, you're like, oh my gosh, look how far I've come. Day to day, you might not notice the difference of where you were yesterday to today, but you look five years ago or two years ago or a year and a half ago, you're like, oh my God, like I've come so far, I've accomplished so much. And so when those hard moments come back again and some new challenge comes, you're like, all right, I got through all those, I can get through these. But it takes the, that community, that support or that spark, hearing some story that gets you going. So your podcast, helping those dads, giving them that moment of, hey, these guys all went through this. I can get through something. We're going to get through this. And there's a crew of other dads who've all been there and I can ask them for help. And if you want to reach out to me and like, you're in a tough place, you got need some advice. I, I will give it. And I, I have done so when other dads reach out, you and me and any other dad who's been in a tough place, we're all a community and we're all here for each other. I think. I really like that because I, I imagine you have had incredibly tough few years and yes, people have helped you, but ultimately you were the one who's taken one step in front of the other. I saw a really nice quote, we're all in the same boat. It's like, no, we're not on the same boat. We're all in the same storm. Some of us are in yachts, some of us in canoes, some of us are just drowning. Basically, you always treat people with kindness. You don't know where they are. You don't know what they're going through. On the outside, they may look the most together, sorted, happy person, and they might be fighting a battle that you know nothing about. Because there are times you get, you get cut up in traffic or someone's rude to you. I find it much easier to go, you don't know what they're going through. They might be in absolute hell. And being kind is something that you can do and cost you anything. You can just be kind. I had lots of conversations where people like you who are like, actually, we could create a community that supports people. All the knowledge is in the room. And there are dads who feel a bit alone or a bit useless or a bit, I don't know what I'm doing, a bit lost. I often get that when I, in, in, when I talk in, to dads in Facebook groups and I just feel a bit lost in what I'm doing. I kind of hope that people listen to podcasts and go, I can totally help that guy out or I can totally do this or maybe I want to talk to him. So I appreciate you coming on and being a guest because that helps. It's much more interesting people listening to two dads have a conversation than me just trying to slightly spin the wheel on top 10 ways to get your toddler to go to sleep. There's plenty of that out there, but real people, real conversations, I think is what really gets people to feel connected and feel like whatever they're going through is something that they can get through. Also, every situation is different. Every problem is different, but at the end of the day, it is something that most people can get through and find a way through with the right support, the right community and the right help. I really hope you got something for this episode. And if you have any questions for me, I'd love to hear from you. I really want to make this podcast a positive, safe community where people who are struggling can come, can get information. Or just get a bit of reassurance that actually they're not the only person in the world dealing with this sort of issue. And also, if you ever feel inspired to come on and talk about a mental health crisis that you've overcome, please contact me at www.dadmindmatters.com. I hope wherever you are in the world, you're okay. Take care.